Hi there everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a 3D modeler and animator in my spare time. The Clone Wars is actually one of the shows that got me interested in the idea of stylized animation and character modeling. So I thought there'd be no better time to see if I could actually replicate the animation and modeling from the show. And so that is what we're going to be doing in this video. I was watching the clip they posted ahead of the upcoming episode Shattered and I thought, okay, there's Rex. We get a nice side on view and a nice front on view. So that's what we're going to use for this video. A super quick intro to sculpt mode. If you add a cube and go to the top left drop down, switch to sculpt mode. I'm using dynamic topology, which is where the sculpting responds to the areas in which you're sculpting and it helps keep things very flexible. So if you tick the box, hit OK, and you're good to go. Just remember that the grab brush, which I'll get into in just a second, doesn't add extra vertices, but all the other brushes do, I think. So just bear that in mind. So what we're going to do in this video is first doing a sculpt based off some reference images from that clip. Uh, I'm not the best sculptor in the world, but this is just going to be used as a base for a redepologization, uh, if that's a word, later. Now that being said, uh, I'm actually relatively happy with how the sculpt turned out, and the retopology is kind of an optional step. That's only important if you want to animate characters like I do. Uh, you could take this uh, sculpt and you could still not do the retopology and just rig it to a, uh, a rig, uh, an armature, and it would still work fine. There's no secret source to sculpting for me. That's what I love about it, really. It's a very tangible kind of physical process once you learn the brushes. I use the grab brush for big, broad decisions, and then I use the smooth and sculpt draw brushes to build up the medium level details. Uh, the grab brush is hotkey G, sculpt draw is X, and smooth is S. Um, and there's pretty much those are the three keys I use more often. Uh, using shift with the draw brush. Uh, means you can actually subtract rather than build up. That's a big thing to remember as well. Towards the conclusion of a sculpt, the other brush I will use is the crease brush, which is useful for carving in details like around the eyes, uh, but also maybe even more importantly, you can use it with shift to build up edges so you get a nice, um, a nice hard edge rather than uh, blobby smooth edge. You might have noticed that I'm not really bothering to sculpt in the ears. That's not a great habit to get into for sculpting, but for my purposes where I'm retopologizing with a mesh, in my case it actually has the ears with it already, so I don't need to go into the lengths of actually making a new ear every single time. Also, I find it just doesn't quite make sense to go beyond the basic gesture of an ear. In many cases, for characters that I make, they often have hair or headgear, um, and you can always add on an ear mesh as a sort of separate accessory. Depending on the style, obviously, if you're doing photorealistic, then you wouldn't want to do that. But for many other styles, you can kind of just have uh, a gesture towards an ear, and that will do fine. As you can possibly see, the sculpt will sometimes get a bit out of control. He'll stop looking like Rex, or he'll have, you know, he'll have a very large cranium, or his chin might be too small or too big. Uh, in those cases, I use a giant grab brush, and I just push and pull it around so that it lines up with the images. Um, and really, I do that at every step of this project, even as we get towards the end with texturing and, and rigging. I'll be continuously making small adjustments because, again, I, I'm experimenting with the workflow and seeing what we can do with animation and motion capture and all that stuff. Now at this stage, I like to add in the eyes as separate sphere objects that can be mirrored in preparation for animation. Spheres are nice and simple to animate, so if you can ensure your character has spherical eyes, that's a big bonus. But also, of course, depending on style, uh, characters will animate with spherical eyes if they're humanoid. So it kind of helps things looking natural as well. I'm also, I'm, I'm terrible at making sure the eyes are actual spheres just by, by sculpting, so that's why I use spheres. I do a similar thing with the eyebrows as well, because along with the eyes, it's useful at the point of initial lighting and shading, so you can have different materials on the skin and the eyebrows. 
Uh, because actually, when you don't have eyebrows, it kind of looks very, very strange. And you'll be looking at a model trying to figure out why it looks odd. And then you realize that you're, you're comparing it to someone who has eyebrows. And it's a huge part of reading someone's face. It's useful to have at that point of initial lighting and shading where all the different materials are going to go. Speaking of the materials, they're very simple at this stage. So the eyes, at least at this stage, are very simple UV spheres with three materials applied to the appropriate concentric rings. The key thing is to make sure you adjust the roughness value down to get that correct shininess of the eye. See, this is quite interesting to me. With the wrinkles on this model combined with the simple shading, he kind of reads like he's a lot older. I suspect that's to do with the textures from the show, doing a lot of the speaking for the wrinkles, and also to do with the shading of the model. What we have here is a shader which is actually using a lot of subsurface scattering, so it looks kind of like real flesh, whereas in the show, obviously, the shaders are not quite that close to reality, I think. But again, that's something I'll have to come back to when I'm doing the texturing. And that about wraps it up for the sculpting. He doesn't look exactly like Rex, but again, that's something which we'll be adjusting continuously through this process. So moving on to retopology. Okay, so for retopology, I'm using a pre-built base model that I purchased commercially way back when, but you can either purchase one yourself or go ahead and make one for yourself. For example, if you're on iOS, I happen to know there's an app called, uh, I think, FaceCap, which exports a face rig very similar to this, which I think you can get that for free. But again, you could always make a mesh yourself. Uh, what this mesh is, is it's a generic human face with a series of blend shapes or shape keys. These could be as simple as the mouth being open or shut, or as is the case with this mesh, you can actually have 52 different uh, shapes. I think they're called fax shapes, or maybe not strictly speaking fax, but basically they are a series of shapes which allow you to sort of generate any expression that you would be able to make on a human face. The nice thing is, is that whatever you do purchase or make yourself, you can reuse that for most humanoid characters you sculpt and then simply adapt it to your character with the method being shown here. So what am I actually doing here? Well, what I'm doing is taking the base mesh, overlaying it on top of the sculpt of Rex, and then sculpting the base mesh so that it matches the sculpt. Now this is a very low-tech method. If you were doing this at scale, where you were doing many, many meshes, many different characters a day, I'm sure there are different solutions. But uh, this technique means you have full control over the process and it is very simple to understand and get up and running. It's really not very complicated. I think it took me sort of five or 10 minutes, I think. And it, it, it just kind of means you, you have full control over where the eyes are, where the mouth is and the lips. Whereas more automated solutions kind of brute force it sometimes in my experience, but I can't speak for every solution, obviously. Uh, so there we are. We now have a model derived from the sculpt that has solid topology as well as a series of blend shapes. Even without animation, solid topology is of course useful for both texturing as well as if we were going to bring this model into something like a game engine, which is I think something I will be doing with this. Obviously a lot of the wrinkles are gone, but that's something which can be added in later or even sort of baked down into a normal map. But I'm actually gonna leave things there because that detail will probably be best added as something working in unison with the texture, as I discussed earlier. So we'll maybe have to return to that in the next installment. So yeah, we now have a lot of flexibility with the character's face. We can have them pull all the expressions we need someone to pull in normal dialogue, uh, or most situations, you know, with fear or anger, what have you. The adaptation into Rex from the base mesh is done on a shape key that is layered under the other shape keys, forming the expressions. So everything is kind of layered up, relatively speaking, to create the final pose. And I think it works quite well. I'll leave things there for now. I'm working on another video where we actually animate the face manually or with software, as well as combining the shape keys with a rig, and of course, a body here for poor old Rex. I might also perhaps take a first look at how we might go around texturing someone in the style of Clone Wars, uh, but that wraps it up. Thanks very much for watching. Do let me know if you have any questions about how to follow up this tutorial, and if you found it useful, do consider liking and subscribing. I'm super keen to keep making videos about modeling and animation, and the support would help me a lot. So thanks again, I'll see you in the next one.